When I started college, my go-to mode of studying was highlighting, reading, and repeating until the knowledge was drilled into my head. But after I got a few tests back, I quickly realized that rereading notes is a terrible way of studying. And it's not just rereading that's the problem. There are countless bad study habits that we develop through the course of our life. And with finals approaching, I want to lay out five scientifically proven study methods to ace your exams. The main problem with rereading is it familiarizes you with the tempo and the rhythm of the text, but not always the core ideas. This is what we call the illusion of knowledge. It's when you can recite a passage word for word, but you don't fully understand the key ideas. So if the structure of the sentence is reworded or reorganized, yeah, I have no idea. So for example, say you were preparing for an exam on the French Revolution. It would help your retention if you knew the historical context in which it took place. 80 years prior to the revolution, King Louis XIV served as France's most decadent king, building for himself the incredible Palace of Versailles, all the while accelerating the divide between rich and poor. Moreover, the political aftermath of the revolution left a power vacuum which led to the rise of Napoleon just six years later. And if you want to further contextualize this information, you could try drawing parallels to our modern wealth inequality and our own populist movements of today. Doing this helps your brain to develop mental models, where your brain can grab hold of new information by linking it to old knowledge and forming a permanent bond. Building these mental models allows your mind to continually form new connections this allows your potential for new information to become virtually endless. From the moment we learn new information, our minds are almost immediately beginning the process of forgetting. So if you delay reviewing material until a couple nights before your exam, you'll have already forgotten most of the key detail. That's why you want to stop forgetting as soon as you've learned something new. And the best way to do that is through testing yourself. In 2007, researchers in Columbia, Illinois took 8th grade students and quizzed them at the end of every science class to refresh material that they'd just learned. In just three semesters, the class average went from a C plus all the way to an A minus. Most study textbooks are divided neatly into subject blocks, and when most of us study, we zero in on one single section or theory and try to learn the main points, and then we move on to the next subject block. This would be equivalent to me going to a basketball court and shooting only corner jump shots until I've locked in my form. The problem with this is that single repetition learning only produces quick results. What research actually suggests is to mix up your shot selection while practicing, and as a result, make your practicing much more difficult. Doing this means your short-term retention will be slower, but as a result, your long-term progress will be much more solidified. Make no mistake, this will make your study efforts much more difficult, even frustrating at first. But this increased difficulty increases the strength of your learning, so you'll be much better prepared when it comes time for exams. In the late 1950s, psychologist B.F. Skinner began to popularize the theory of errorless learning. Skinner believed the act of making mistakes is counterintuitive to learning, as it teaches you to remember the mistakes rather than the correct information. And the basics of Skinner's theory are still present in many classrooms today, even though it goes against everything we now know about how our minds take in information. Working through problems and making mistakes is an essential part of learning. So if you find yourself struggling in a math, physics, or language class, try pushing yourself to work one section ahead in your curriculum. Struggling through these theories and illusions before you have all the steps is far more challenging, but each class will become a review of the work you've already completed. And whether or not you got the questions right, having already attempted the material will make you much better prepared to learn and help the information stick as you move forward.
If you're faced with a subject that requires long-form memorization, try using a memory technique known as the memory palace to help you remember large volumes of information. The human brain isn't designed to remember long stretches of text. Most of us will struggle to retain a number of combinations longer than seven digits. But when it comes to remembering things like images and directions, our mind is actually very good at holding on to mental imagery. The trick of the memory palace is to take a space you're familiar with and imagine a series of characters around it that will remind you of what you're trying to remember. Using a memory palace vastly increases your capacity for holding new information. So much so that the current Guinness World Record holder utilized the memory palace to recite 67,890 digits of pi. That is it for today's video, guys. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you wanna see more content from us here at Goal Guys. Happy studying and we will catch you in next week's video. Cheers.